Hi, this is Philhinton and welcome along to the Panasonic Convention 2019. So instead of me standing in front of the TVs and waffling on, we're going to go to Rob. Rob Taylor is going to take us through the entire range for this year, from the LED LCD TVs up to the amazing looking OLED TVs that they have announced this year, including the GZ2000, which we originally saw back in Vegas back in January. Yeah, so I think first and foremost, the main thing for us to mention is just how big the range of OLEDs are this year for, from Panasonic. So for 2019, we're bringing a whole range of four new OLEDs to market, which, as you mentioned, the GZ2000 is the top of the pile. So what makes this one the most premium one for us is really the combination of the picture quality and the audio. So we call this the most complete TV ever. And the reason we say that is because we offer the best picture quality experience that we've ever been able to offer on an OLED TV. We take the panel a lot more in advance of its development and we use our own know-how and 101 years of innovation that Panasonic have been able to deliver and take all of that R&D and really push it into this TV. So the panel itself is able to achieve higher brightness levels, higher APLs, um, higher peak brightness without any loss of, sat of uh, contrast or any enriching of colour saturation. So the picture quality in itself is literally the best picture quality we've been able to deliver. It's obviously taking a lot of the Hollywood expertise as well, the collaboration that we've done with the likes of Stefan Sonnefeld at Company 3 and Deluxe and really delivering it on um, you know, a real picture precise sort of 55 inch and 65 inch set this year. So the picture quality, as I say, driven by the, the different pa differentiated panel is the first thing. The second thing is the audio experience. So we use sound tuned by Technics in this model. So you're getting that, again, high, high fidelity, sort of really, really rich audio experience. But you're also getting Dolby Atmos delivered in a whole new way because the TV not only has front firing speakers, but also up firing speakers. So when you get close to the TV set, you'll notice that has sort of audio speakers that are pointing upwards to the ceiling. And that's to project the audio upwards and over the head to really give you that more immersive Dolby audio, um, Dolby Atmos audio experience. So really we call it the most complete TV because of the fact that it delivers over and beyond in picture quality and also over and beyond in audio. I think the what happens with the panel is the interesting thing. So you're buying it from LG Display but you're getting it early enough to do your own development on it. So the the panel is called a professional edition. Um, again, that's taking a lot of the company's know-how and experience and collaboration with Hollywood to try and really deliver a picture quality that is over and beyond what we would ordinarily deliver. So hence why we call it professional, because it's been pro professionally produced for high levels of picture quality, driven by the cinematographers and sort of the Hollywood industry in itself. But yeah, we take the panel a lot earlier in its production to allow us to really add this technology and really finesse the picture quality as the way that we want it. As you know, there's only kind of one major source for OLED across the globe so with whichever brand you are that's selling OLED you're always going to be you know working within the parameters but for us we had these parameters opened and really unleashed and that's why you can see this leading picture quality in these models which are over and beyond not only the rest of the OLED range within Panasonic but we believe our competitors too. Now the drop down model is the GZ1500 so what's the difference between that and the top of the end? Yeah so the GZ1500 or 1500 is the next model in the lineup and the key difference is here the kind of the panel as I say we don't move we move away from the professional edition panel and more into the kind of Panasonic standard OLED panel so we also lose the audio sort of directional sound so we don't have the upward firing speakers in the 1500 Instead, we have kind of the already best-in-class picture quality that Panasonic OLED can deliver, but with integrated soundbar and front-firing speakers to kind of give you that forward-facing directional sound improvement. So the main difference is the fact that the audio is delivered front-firing, slightly bigger, slightly beefier, um, without having the upward firing that the uh, GZ2000 has. Is it the same panel or no, not? It's a different panel. So the GZ1500 is kind of not the professional edition panel. It's the sort of the normal traditional Panasonic OLED panel. So again, it's already amazing picture quality driven by the HCX Pro Intelligent Processor, but it's not the professional edition panel. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of already a leading class OLED panel from Panasonic. And then we've got the GZ1000, so dropping another 500, so what are we losing the 500 on? So from the 1500, which as I mentioned, the, the key kind of point of difference is the forward firing integrated soundbar. The 1000 doesn't have the forward firing integrated soundbar, it has the traditional down firing speakers. So a very, very sleek design with the new stand concept that we've put in, which is perfectly matching to Panasonic's range of soundbars and uh, video Blu-ray products as well. So if you were to buy a GZ1000, thousand you'd be buying it really to perfectly match it with other Panasonic sound and home entertainment devices so that gives you a kind of a nice complete home entertainment experience package if you like from a design perspective 
And then moving down the range and we moved down the stand, we got the, uh, the entry level, I suppose you could call it. Um, tell us about it. Yeah, our base model is called the GZ950. It's available in 65 inch and 55 inch. And this is really continuing the good work that we've done uh, already on the existing FZ802 and before that its predecessor EZ952. So the base model for our Panasonic OLED is really, really competitive this year, has great performance. It delivers not only Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, which we've discussed today, but also HDR10+. So when we talk about the most sort of like cinematic Hollywood type of viewing experience, we're really combining all of that premium technology in our base model. So the GZ950 is a, a great model that delivers, again, flawless picture quality, um, awesome levels of kind of uh, HDR support, some great features as well this year in terms of auto calibration, working with Kalman, also some great um, performance in terms of um, the new chipset as well with the HCX Pro Intelligent Processor, delivering dynamic contrast enhancement, dynamic, uh, dynamic depth enhancement, um, and again, extra, extra color performance as well, which is something that at Panasonic we're, we're really good at delivering and something that we've kind of been really well supportive of. So yeah, the GZ950 is the base model and as you go through the range we keep a lot of the core features. So HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision, which is both forms of dynamic metadata available in the market, is available across all of our OLED rod models. So it's not something that we're reserving only for the, the top of the range model, it's something that's available across all of the OLED products this year. So the GZ950, the base model as I say, and then we step up into the GZ1000, which is a, a new design concept for us. We have a new stand which is put, designed to be perfectly fitting with a lot of the Panasonic premium um, soundbars this year. So again, if you want that sleek, sort of seamless home entertainment experience combining TV and soundbar, then the GZ1000 is definitely for you. And then above the GZ1000, we have the GZ1500, which then features an integrated soundbar with front-firing sound to give you a much richer audio experience, a bit more of a beefier, weightier audio sound. Again, no compromise on, on technology or features, so that whole HDR experience is kind of delivered all the way through the range. And then on top of that, that's where it gets really special because that's the GZ2000 for us, and this is what we call the most complete TV ever, combining a whole new uh, sort of OLED panel, which is our professional edition panel which is something that we get a lot more earlier in the production stage a lot something that we can really put some more time and effort into developing better picture quality resulting in higher brightness levels higher peak brightnesses um, same amazing levels of contrast and color with and without any compromise I mean one of the great things with the OLED range this year is it's all driven by our new HCX Pro Intelligent Processor which is a whole new piece of um, silicon and chipset which is really able enabling us to, to drive awesome picture quality and really deliver that kind of Hollywood reference grade picture which is something that was talked about in today's keynote and something that we've been talking about for the last couple of years now and something and, and is the key reason why we have the likes of Stefan Sonnefeld and the uh, Hollywood industry behind us using us as kind of their choice of, of TV monitor if you like. So before I, I come in with the low ball questions, um, when, are these, when are these sets available? Yeah, so um, we'll release some more information shortly. Um, it's safe to say that all of the OLED range will be available you know, in this summertime. Um, we'll share more information along with the prices as you expect and, and I'm sure the forum members will be keen to hear this. It's all, all in good time, um, but yeah, as of today, they're all going to be launching, let's say, summertime this year. Okay. The big question everybody's going to ask, it's going to be on the thread straight away, um, HDMI 2.1, do you have it on any of your TVs this year? Yeah, so what we do have is HDMI 2.0B, um, just in terms of HDMI 2.1, I know there was some talk about it at CES, which is, you know, again, the latest innovations people are always interested in, they want to learn more about, but for us, HDMI 2.0B is completely satisfactory to where we are in the industry. I mean, in terms of what's in spec and what's out of spec, you know, HDMI 2.1 isn't specified in any broadcast globally at this present time, so although we work quite heavily within the broadcast industry, you know, Panasonic Corporation has a broadcast division you know so we're always checking what's going on what needs to be done etc etc but for us we support HDMI 2.0b because that delivers us all of the spec we think is relevant for now and in for the near future as well HDMI 2.1 is a meaningful specification I think for next generation next next generation but for 2019 as we are today we think we can deliver a, a, a killer HDR viewing experience all within HDMI 2.0b uh, via OTT and via HDMI so for us this is where we are HDMI 2.0b. 
Now, some people might ask what your interpretation of in the near future is. So when you say in the near future, how long are you, are you speculating? Yeah, it's difficult to say because, as I mentioned before, it's not within any specification within any broadcast. So we're always kind of at mercy of, of, of what the broadcast industry is doing. So, you know, when it starts to find its way into specification, I'm sure it'll be a lot more at the forefront of the kind of the development sort of thinking but as it is now it's HDMI 2.0 B is completely satisfactory for the market so a lot of the advanced features um, that HDMI 2.1 B is uh, sorry, HDMI 2.1 is supposed to deliver can actually be achieved on HDMI 2.0 B so for us we believe that the HDMI 2.0 B is the correct spec for for now and for the very near future and for the you know future full stop really. So the, uh, the Olympics happens in 2020 and uh, I noticed that there's been no talk whatsoever about 8K. You don't have an 8K TV, so what's the reasoning behind that? Yeah, so first and foremost, good luck to the Team GB at 2020. Um, we're, again, global partners with the Olympics, so again, Panasonic Corporation works quite heavily with them, and, and in, even in the UK, we're UK sponsors of Team GB itself, so, you know, um, we're very heavily involved with the Olympics, both at a sort of commercial level in terms of providing a lot of the infrastructure be it CCTV or kind of RFID for the for the games or whether it's just through marketing sponsorship as well but anyway so for 2020 yes the broad the games are, are rumored to be broadcast in 8k uh, mainly driven by the innovation that the guys at NHK are doing who again Panasonic do partner with and work with so today we're displaying 4k HDR because again that's kind of where the market is at now 8K is not within any specification within Europe um, and as and when it does fall into specification we'll start working with the broadcasters to assess how the picture quality needs to be developed and how the technology needs to be developed but for now 4K HDR is very much where we are, are at. Um, within the Panasonic Corporation 8K does exist, um, again broadcast division has been working with NHK on 8K video processing and capturing. Um, and also some display technology but for the consumer industry the focus is all about 4K HDR there's still so much work to be done in terms of getting people into this next generation picture quality so as nice as it is to, to kind of reference and have in terms of being able to deliver you know new vid new display sort of uh, display experiences it's not really the the kind of the priority for Panasonic the priority for Panasonic is delivering you know amazing flawless 4K HDR picture quality which is why you see such an extended range of OLED lineup in 4K HDR because that's 100% where our focus is put. Now the OLEDs look fantastic but let's move further down the stand and let's have a look at your LEDs. So this fill here is our GX800. This is an awesome TV that we're bringing to market for 2019. For an LCD TV it packs a huge punch in terms of specification and performance. It's the model within our LCD lineup which features our HDX processor which as most video files know or most fans of Panasonic know is kind of the key engine that drives a lot of the awesome picture quality that we can provide. So the HDX processor is really powering an awesome uh, picture quality experience driven by again amazing colour reproduction, huge levels of contrast and some really really pinpoint razor sharp images as well. Also, outside of the HDX processor, we have some amazing specification in this model. So this also features HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision all in the same space. So one of the things that we were talking about in the keynote today is putting both premium forms of metadata further down the lineup. So this is what we mean by that. So combining HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision into kind of a, a core LCD space is something that's never been done before and we're really, really proud to be doing it with the GX800. Furthermore, we also have Dolby Atmos as well. So if you want that vision.atmos experience where you can not only see great metadata, dynamic metadata, but you can also hear great object-based audio, we have Dolby Atmos um, availability in this TV. So again, the TV will be able to decode the, the Atmos signal and play it through the two-channel speakers, no problem. So again, giving you a new experience with an LCD TV. Outside of that, we have, again, great improvements in terms of response rate, refresh rates for the gamers out there that want to use the TV. You can achieve like record levels of refresh rates um, and and response times within uh, the Panasonic lineup. And then also, if you want to use voice activated technology with the TV, you can do that too. So, you know, whether it's Alexa or Google Assistant, this TV can really deliver on almost every count. So we're super pleased with this product. We think it's going to be one of the key models in the, in the market. And the GX800 is going to be available again this year from springtime. So we're, we're really pleased with this one. We think it's going to be a, a, good, a good positive model in the market. 
And one thing I have noticed looking down the range is the screen sizes. There seems to be quite a, a sweep of sizes this year. Yeah, yeah. So last year, for those of, for those out there that were looking at the Panasonic range, you would noticed it was quite difficult to find a premium LCD at 43 or 40 inch. That's, you know, the trend for screen sizes in the UK are that people are tending to trade up and go bigger. But we forget the customers out there that are willing to pay for, for good quality product in a smaller screen size. Maybe they're limited by the living room size or maybe they just don't want a big screen size. So for us this year, we've increased the number of 40 inch TVs just to really cover that customer demand because it's something that we think we we should be doing and then you'll see a big improvement in 65 inch coverage as well because that's ultimately where customers are trading up to so 65 inch will be available not only in just OLED but also all the way through our LCD lineup as well so if you want that big screen viewing experience you can get it from Panasonic with great levels of picture quality um, and great levels of design as well. Okay so uh, just a couple of technical questions uh, the panel type that's being used Yes, yeah, so these are all VA panels, so hence why they're at 40 inch, 50 inch and 58 inch. So we've been working with VA panel for a few years now. For those of you that remember the EX series and DX series, they were all VA panels. Um, for those that were keen eyed for, for 2018, they would have realized we moved to IPS panels. And obviously pros and cons with each type of panel, but for Panasonic, we because our, our picture quality is focused on accuracy and color reproduction, the VA is really good for that. So hence why we've moved to VA to really flex and strengthen our our, our stance's best picture quality brand. And are these edge lit or are they direct lit? Yeah, so they're edge lit LEDs, so again, you'll see nice slim designs without any compromise on picture quality or, or, or colour reproduction as well. And how are you handling uh, the HDR side of things with the edge lit? Because obviously that is a flaw, we're having the, the lights in there, it's, it's, it's a, a drawback of the technology. So how are you getting around that problem? So the HDR viewing experience on these TVs are all really, really good. So there's obviously some element of impact in the manufacturing process, but you know, with our HCX processor, that's why we put a lot of emphasis on giving the best silicon, the best chipset that we can do to these LCD products so that they can deliver a much richer um, HDR viewing experience. So there's a lot of compromise and a lot of kind of grading and a lot of kind of development that's gone into delivering the best HDR experience on these TVs, no matter how they're lit. It just so happens that these ones are edge lit. So it's almost like a kind of they've been perfectly designed for them in a way. So how do you see the, the range just to, to wrap up on everything that we've covered today? You've got OLED, you've got LED, LCD. Is, is OLED the Halo product? Is that where all the development is going? Or are you, are you giving just as much to the LED, LCD TVs? Well, I think like first and foremost, if you look at the technology that we bring into market, and this is before we talk about the, you know, the display type of or the panel type of product, you know, bringing Dolby, Vision, Dolby Atmos into the consumer TV is, is a massive step forward for us. Being the first brand to combine Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus in the same place, you know, really championing the development and also being one of the founding fathers of the HDR10 Plus group as well, really is indicating where we're focusing on, which is the picture quality development. So, you know, delivering, as I say, the most you know, widest range of HDR formats plus the both premium formats in one space with Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus is amazing. So there's a lot of focus on that and the pitch quality type. Um, obviously OLED, that's where a lot of the market growth is. People love OLED TVs, you know, you know whether it's the pitch quality, the slimness, the design, etc. You know, consumers are really, really going for OLED TV. So hence why we've effectively doubled our lineup once again. We started up the, you know, with our OLED business with one TV. Now we're now we're into eight separate TVs. So there's obviously a lot of emphasis and focus on developing premium te technology, premium picture quality, all driven with the OLED part of our range. But again, we've just discussed some GX800 and some of the other LCD models, and you'll see, again, huge amounts of um, uh, efforts have gone into making these products as great as possible. You know, putting HCX processors into LCDs, putting, you know, Dolby Vision into, AC into LCD TVs, Dolby Atmos into LCD TVs, you know. There's a huge push on in terms of making the picture quality better and the overall product better. So Panasonic's direction is about premium devices, premium products, really focusing on picture quality at the heart of it all, you know, backed by the Hollywood sort of collaboration. So that's very much our direction and our commitment. One of the interesting things from the keynote, just to finish up, was the fact that even though you've added Dolby Vision to the TVs, 
you've not given up on HDR10+, Plus. you still see that as a, a viable format going forward? Yeah, why not? It's, it's not about you know one over the other. I think that's one of the things that, again, was discussed in the keynote. It's not about saying one is better than the other. It's about giving the choice and working with Hollywood, and Hollywood recognised that HDR10+, Plus is a format that they would like to champion. You know, That's championed in condition with, with 20th Century Fox and Warner Brothers. It's not a TV manufacturer technology. It's something that's really dri driven from the industry. Um, and then obviously Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, which are, again, established HDR formats for the Hollywood industry. So it's not about choosing one over the other, it's about providing the choice. And what's really great for the consumer, you know, as most forum members can, can imagine as, as consumers themselves, is being able to have that peace of mind that whichever road you go down, whether it's a Blu-ray that's multi-format or, you know, a streaming service that delivers one or the other, you know, being able to be able to watch either is more important than being able to watch one or the other. So hence why a lot of effort's been made to, to deliver both formats and really kind of give consumers that peace of mind because that's, what, that's what's most important at the end of the day. Rob, thank you very much for giving us your time. It is appreciated. Thank you very much, Phil. Good luck. Thank you.